45 seconds. We've been shopping. Is Lord Chip in? It's all right, Sally? Oh, smashing. And two crackers each. <laughs> Get me, Queen of Sheba. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Pearson. Good morning, Sally. <laughs> morning, Peter. Morning. Oh. How are you? Got a cold? Hangover. Shouldn't be wasting your time. You've got an exam in three months. Ugh, don't remind me. Not before Christmas, anyway. Don't mind my mentioning it, but you uh, don't look too good yourself today. Hurrah with the missus? Something like that. That'll be two pounds, Peter. Two pounds? What for? Tonight's party. What are we having, then? Champagne? And dancing girls. Well, they better be good. Anyway, I need to get my money's worth. <laughs> Thank you. Roll on, New Year. Miss Pringle, do you feel it really necessary to make such a display of your popularity? I thought they'd liven the desk up a little. Banking is one of the few dignified businesses left in the world, Miss Pringle. Do you mind terribly if we keep it that way? I'm sorry, sir. Morning, Pearson. Morning, Mr. Carroll. Sanderson. Morning, sir. I noticed you didn't mention the party. Anderson and Pearson to come in, please. wants to know if you're a hepcat or a square. <laughs> Do you mind?
Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Fodor? Pearson, do you expect people to write with a pen like that? What's wrong with it, Mr. Fodor? Wrong? The nib's completely corroded. It obviously hasn't been cleaned or examined for weeks. This isn't a post office, you know. A customer coming into this bank has a right to expect efficiency. Well, I'll speak to Miss Pringle. She, uh... Who you speak to is a matter of complete indifference to me, Pearson. What concerns me is the fact that it is always I who have to discover every fiddling little misdemeanor in this branch. A general doesn't inspect every button of every soldier every day, you know. That is supposed to be what his subordinates are for. I'll see to it immediately. Perhaps you don't agree with me. Perhaps you think because the combined assets of the city and colonial bank total more than 371 million pounds, a tuppenny penny is of no account. I'll see to it right away, Mr. Potter. Do that. And send Harville to me, will you? See you, Harvard. Come in. Mr. Pearson said you wanted to see me, sir. Obviously, you know what we have to discuss. I'm not sure, sir. Perhaps you don't think it worth discussing. Perhaps you think that odd pounds, shillings and pence can be missing from the books from time to time without further comment. Sir, if you mean last Wednesday's balance... Well, was it last Wednesday's balance, sir? Why? Have there been other days when the balance has been irregular? Sir, I thought as Mr. Burnaby had returned the ten pounds, the matter was more or less closed. We were very busy that day and I thought... Well, Burnaby's an old customer. He was accidentally overpaid and... What... A very interesting attitude, Harville. And what would have happened if the money hadn't been returned? Would the mistake have been discovered then? And if not, what method would have been used to conceal it? Look, Mr. Fordyce, I give you my word. Nobody was trying to conceal anything. It was... Well, it was just a mistake, that's all. I suggest to you that it's a lie. And that, in fact, the money was only put back in the till after you knew that Burnaby had returned the ten pounds to me personally. No, sir. I also suggest that there was an actual conspiracy that someone else on the staff was involved with you in the whole plot. But that's ridiculous. Why should I try to conceal something that the auditors would have been bound to discover anyway? Who initialed your balance last Wednesday night? Well, that's nothing to do with it, because I'd already put the money back by then. When my balance was initialed on Wednesday, it was a correct balance. Who initialed it? I don't see how it makes any difference who initialed it. But I do. Was it Sanderson? No, he would... No, it wasn't, sir. Apart from myself and Sanderson, only one other person is authorized to check your balance. Who is that other person? You know perfectly well who initialed it, sir. I am only trying to be fair, trying not to jump to any conclusions. But it does seem conclusive that these initials are Mr. Pearson's. Are those Pearson's initials, or are they not? Yes, they are. Come in. Oh, Pearson, I was just going to send for you. Of the old Harville. Thank you. You wanted to see me, Mr. Fodder? It's about this business of falsifying the books which you and Harville have been mixed up in. Falsifying? This question of Burnaby's ten pounds. You initialed Harville's balance last Wednesday, did you not? It wasn't falsifying. We were checking each item. In a day or two, we would have discovered the mistake. It's very easy to say after the event. We're not exactly amateurs in the business, sir. That's certainly true. Amateurs wouldn't be clever enough to create a fund specifically to cover up mistakes made by the staff. You do see where such abuse could lead, don't you? Well, do you see the point? This fund operates only for mistakes which are discovered which means that other mistakes, or rather falsifications, could be occurring which are not discovered. I suppose you're entitled to put your own construction on what has happened. Thank you. Then you would agree that I have a duty to protect this bank and its clients against embezzlement. 
I must ask you to withdraw that allegation. What's insane? It's no good, Fordyce, is it? What's no good? This whole business it doesn't involve Burnaby's ten pounds. It's a question of temperaments, yours and mine. I realise that it's largely my fault, that we haven't anything in common. Really, Pearson. Can't we straighten this ridiculous business out once and for all? I, I know we disagree about almost everything. That my way of looking at things irritates you. I am not in the least interested in your way of looking at things. You are here to concern yourself with banking, not personalities. Mr. Forrest, I'm asking you to recommend me for a transfer to one of our branches in London. Do you really think that I could recommend you to another branch? Your signature on a balance sheet is apparently worthless. If I were to recommend you, I'd be as guilty of dishonesty as you are. I'm not dishonest. Then explain these initials. I have. Not to my satisfaction. Apparently, you haven't grasped the full significance of what I've just been saying. It isn't only that I couldn't, in all honesty, forward your transfer. There is also a strong doubt in my mind as to whether I can keep you on here. You dismiss me after 11 years? From the one business I know, you make it impossible for me to get another job as chief clerk at any bank in the country. You, you do that. It is time to open for business, Pearson. Morning, Jim. Morning. If I park over there. It's only 20 minutes, sir. Oh. Merry Christmas, sir. The same to you. I'll ask Mr. Fordyce if you'll see me for a few moments, will you please? Just a moment, sir. Personal or a business matter, sir? Business, of course. Come in. Yes, Pearson, what is it? Someone to see you, sir. You know I don't see anyone in the mornings without an appointment. Gore Hepburn. What sort of person is he? I should say someone of consequence, sir. <sighs> Very well, show him in. You might interrupt us after ten minutes. Don't want the fellow here all morning. Very good, sir. Would you come this way, sir? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Colonel Gore Hepburn, sir. Morning, Forrest. Morning, Colonel. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Need me anymore, sir? No, that's all, Pearson. Just a moment. Come in, Pearson, and close the door. But I'm afraid I don't understand. This is only a will. Close it, Pearson. I sent in my personal card because I did not wish to disclose the interests I represent. In fact, I am from the head office of the Home and Mercantile Bankers Insurance. The Home and Mercantile? They insure this branch and look after our security. Exactly. I'm on a tour of all your branches in the Southwest. I'm sorry to spring myself on you in this way, but it's part of my job to see that people are on their toes and that the safeguard clauses in our policy are being complied with. I hope you find everything in order, sir. Well, frankly, Pearson, I think I've caught you flat-footed. I don't understand. Oh, now, look, Pearson. I walk into this bank this morning, hand a card over the counter, and immediately I'm shown in here and left alone with Fordyce. I could have stuck a gun in his ribs as soon as the door closed. If I may say so, sir, you don't look much like a gunman. Really, you people in the provinces must stop thinking in this way. 
How do you know what a gunman looks like these days? Agreed, Fordyce? Yes, yes, of course. Pearson, you should have inquired more thoroughly into Colonel Gorhepan's business. I naturally assume that you had. I'm sorry, Mr. Fordyce. But you, you couldn't have gone into the strong room, Colonel. It requires two keys to open it. Mr. Fordyce only has one of them. I have the other. Well, that only makes matters worse, Pearson. It's precisely when the bank robber is up against something he didn't know that people begin to get hurt. And by the way, I shall want to have a look at the layout of the strong room later on. Of course, whenever you say. You see what I'm getting at, Pearson? Yes, sir. I, I see now, sir. We won't let you in again without a careful check, sir. <laughs> Good man. That will be all, Pearson. I hope you won't think that Pearson's standards of security represent the efficiency of this branch as a whole. If his negligence... Presumably, you asked him to show me in for that. Of course, I accept full responsibility for any shortcomings in my staff. However, I assure you it won't happen again. In fact, I've been thinking of replacing Pearson. Oh? Uh, he's been with you 11 years, hasn't he? How do you know that? I make it my business to know every small detail of the branches I visit. Well, naturally, you would like to do. Excuse me, please. What I speaking? Hello. Hello, is anyone there? Mommy! Harry, is that you? Harry. Yes, my dear, what is it? Do whatever he says. Do whatever he says, for the love of God, I beseech you. Harry, can you hear me? Don't do anything for us. They'll die if you move or say a word. What are you talking about? It. Let me speak to them. Shut up! Now listen to me, Fordyce. Nothing will happen if you sit quite still until I finish speaking. What have my wife and child to do with this? You there are two be... men at your house. At this moment, your wife has an electrode attached to each side of her head. If you fail to cooperate with us in any way whatever, they will pass a charge through the circuit. It is extremely painful. And I'm afraid the effects of it are permanent. She would never recover her wits. What is it you want? Mm. Just some money. Going hunting, Pearson? Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I thought you might have asked for it during your inspection. But we seem to have mislaid the ammunition. Oh, it's not very sensible, is it? You can't shoot desperados with an empty gun, you know. Oh, yeah. I thought we had some round somewhere. Mm, well, I shouldn't worry, Pearson. They're not very accurate things at the best of times. By the way, I just wanted to tell you that Mr. Fordyce and I are not to be disturbed on any account. No one is to come in unless we send for them. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Good man. I'm always telling myself that I ought to give it up, but now I suppose I never shall. Hmm. Snowing. The paper said that it was going to get warmer today. Now look at it. Do you mind if I light this by the window? It has a certain significance for someone watching out there. We have several prearranged signals and uh, a special one in case anything goes wrong. Swine. Swine. Do you mind if we get down to business? I've allowed a short while for your mind to adjust itself to the idea. Do you think my mind can adjust itself to the idea that my, my wife and my child might be? Well, really, Fordyce, you're being very unappreciative. It's rather a good plan, don't you think? No noisy guns or bleeding cashiers. No 
rushing off in stolen cars, none of that working through the night with the do-it-yourself tools and the unstable explosives. I detest brutality. I want bank robberies to be smoother, more sociable. Oh, now, how about it? Beginning to feel adjusted. You'll never get away with it. Oh, unfortunate for your family if I don't. Fordyce, I can't impress upon you enough that you must behave with absolute naturalness during the next 50 minutes. Remember every single second that the lives of your wife and child depend on it. Now, in a few moments, you will call Pearson back in. Listen carefully to what you have to do. It is imperative that the luggage from my car is brought in here, but at your suggestion. Is that clear? I'm parked in a 20-minute zone. I'm going to tell Pearson to drive the car into the car park. You will inquire whether I have any luggage. I'm not very concerned about it, but you are and you insist that the luggage is brought in here. Now, do you understand that? Yes. I think so. I'm not telling you exactly what to say, because I want you to express yourself in your usual manner. I believe you attended a staff dinner last February, where you were introduced to Desmond Hyde, one of the CNC board of directors. Is that correct? How did you know? Oh, never mind. It'll give us something to be talking about when Pearson comes in. Now, ring for him. Miss Pringle speaking. Ask Mr. Pearson to come in, please. Yes, sir. You'd have been most amused if you could have seen him at the house party. He's a most delightful fellow. A first-class shot, too. You know... Come in. Oh, come in, Pearson. I'm sorry, Colonel, what you were saying? Oh, I was only going to say that all the most charming people seem to end up on the board of the CNC. Oh, by the way, Desmond Hyde was there with his wife, Anna. I think he said he'd met you. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I dined with him last year at the staff dinner. I should, should like to meet him again. Oh, uh, by the way, Pearson, would you mind moving my car into the car park? It's in the 20-minute zone at the moment, and I hate breaking the law. I'm afraid I don't drive, sir. Oh, well, uh, perhaps somebody else. Uh... Yes, of course, uh, Harville. Yes. Uh, just a moment, Pearson. Uh... I suppose you left nothing of value in your car, Colonel? Oh, no, 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 or in my baggage. I wonder if it'd be safe leaving it in the car park. It's unattended, you know. Hmm, well, I suppose it is a bit tempting. Yes, you'd better bring the luggage in here, Pearson. It's no good taking chances these days. Well, if it'll set your mind at rest, Fordyce. I'll see to it, sir. Yes. Just a shade more deference, Fordyce. A little more eagerness to please me. Otherwise, I shall be obliged to arrange a small screen to refresh your memory. You can't be. The stuff should be melting now, not falling. Do you expect me to worry if it snows or not? My worries have automatically become your worries now, Fordyce. If anything should go wrong, the slightest hitch... I can't stop the snow. No. I suppose that would be asking too much, wouldn't it? Ah! ah. Thank you, Pearson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ah, uh, let me see. You must be Miss Pringle. Yes, sir. Now, now, tell me, Miss Pringle, are you looking forward to Christmas? Oh, yes, sir. You're going to have a Christmas party here? Uh, well, I... Uh, somebody did mention it, but I don't really know. Yeah. Well, perhaps you'd allow me to make a, a small contribution to the party fund, eh? Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. No, oh, oh, please don't thank me. It allays the feelings of guilt I sometimes get about the way I misuse my expense allowance. <laughs> thank you, sir. You're very fortunate in your staff, for that. That is not my opinion. Well, well, uh, have you ever contributed to their Christmas fund? I am not in the habit of ingratiating myself with my subordinates. I have news for you, Fordyce. You have just done that. I have done what? Ingratiated yourself. Give me five pounds. Five pounds? What for? Your contribution to the fund. And a slight token of regret for the ungenerous thoughts you've just expressed. That is only four. That is all I have. I don't carry much cash. Mm, very wise. It, uh, it protects you in case of robbery, doesn't it? Ah, well, never mind. You can owe me the other pound. Tell me, Fordyce, have you ever read Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire? No, I haven't. How lucky for you. You'll be able to start as soon as I've gone. It's in these cases. Uh, all 12 volumes. The rest, I'm afraid, uh, rather old blankets. You get the idea, of course. I'm not a fool. You'll be interested to know that we've got plenty of time. The whole operation is scheduled to end in exactly 45 minutes. We'll unpack the cases in the strong room and refill them with the money. Not a very fair exchange, I'm afraid. I don't expect the exchange to be permanent. Don't you? I'll explain the way I want them refilled when we get down there. Oh, you know, I think banks are rather fun. I've got to make a pest of myself, I'm afraid. Hmm. Secret plans, person? Well, uh, uh, let's have a look at the alarm system. Uh, this way, Colonel. Harville. This is Colonel Gore Hepburn, who's inspecting our security arrangements for the insurance company. Uh, Harville. Morning, sir. Ah, where's your alarm button? There, sir. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, you've never had occasion to use it, I swear. Well, we're lucky, sir. Very law-abiding community. Yes, well, you know, it's not the local people we're worried about. It's these smart characters down from London. I don't mind telling you, it's got us worried. That's why I'm here. Haversham is the centre of a large agricultural area, Colonel. London is a long way away. There'd be plenty of time to put up roadblocks. Yes, you'd be surprised how these fellows can think their way around roadblocks. Well, you, uh, you carry the minimum amount of stock in the tills, I suppose? Oh, yes, yes. Any withdrawal over £500 has to come from the strong room, unless, of course, we'd had prior warning. Uh-huh. Well, let's have a look at the next one. Yeah. This is Mr. Sanderson, Colonel. Sanderson, Sanderson. Where have I... Oh, yes. Didn't I see your name in the Banker's World Monthly a little while ago? Uh, yes, sir, it yes, was. Yes, of course. You you were runner-up in the regional chess competition. Well, you never told me you had a potential chess champion on the staff, Fordyce. I'm more concerned with what Sanderson does in his office hours. <laughs> yes, well, I suppose chess is a failing of mine too, Sanderson. Robbing banks is a game of wits, after all, isn't it, eh? <laughs> well, now, where's your alarm switch? Same place as Harville's? Oh, yes, sir. Ah, yes. Oh, well, any complaint? Well, sir, since you asked me, the central heating here... Colonel Gore Hepburn is concerned with security, Sanderson. 
Well, I'll uh, try to breathe the word higher up, Sanderson, but I can't make them promises. Now, I'd like to have a look at the code book you use for your currency orders, and then we'll go down to the strong room. Colonel Gore Hepburn is concerned with security, Sanderson. Oh, snap out of it, George. It's not the end of the world. That's the third black I put up today. First, I didn't check up on him. Then there was the uh, empty gun, and now he's just caught me daydreaming. Oh, he's not so bad for Colonel. You really should have checked up on him, I suppose. He'll probably ask you if you have. Why don't you put in a call to his office? It's a bit late. It's better late than never. I'll book a call for you. Miss Pringle, got Holman Mercantile's number. You don't know what this is costing me. It's costing you 90,000 pounds, for now. I'm afraid you're going to be greatly disappointed, Colonel. The stocks of a bank in a small community like this do not add up to anything like that amount. Take off your glasses for that. For what purpose? What do you want? Just take them off. I can't see you now. <laughs> there are two components factories and a Birmingham chemical subsidiary on the bypass, all of which draw their wages here tomorrow. Tomorrow is also Christmas Eve. Your average withdrawals on Christmas Eve have never been less than £7,000. Your current stock shown in head office return last week were £89,000. We've been a year setting up this operation. There isn't the smallest detail of your branch which is not known to me. Put on your glasses, you look ridiculous. Don't misread my character, Fordyce. I may be unable to suppress my natural charm, but try to remember I've only to make one of several prearranged gestures at that window and your wife would be subjected to the most unbearable torture. You would probably find that she would never... Don't. There's about 97,000 pounds there. The stock lists are kept just inside the safety doors. Thank you. Now, I want you to listen to the next stage carefully. You and I, with Pearson, will go to the strong room. That's through there, isn't it? There's delay. What? Right. On London calls. I suppose everybody's trying to phone their Aunt Nelly for Christmas. Oh, I don't say. They'll phone back as soon as they've got a line. Oh, thanks. You let Pearson get halfway up the stairs, and then you call him back. You tell him that if anyone comes in for a large withdrawal, they're to be asked to wait a short while until you become available. I'll leave you a few thousand pounds to meet any emergencies for the next hour or so. Pearson goes. Then we come back up here, take the cases down to the strong room, and repack them in a way I'll describe to you as we go along. Now, is all that absolutely clear? I think I understand. Very well. In a few moments, I shall ask you to repeat your instructions. Well, we'd better not send for Pearson for another five minutes. Mustn't rush things, you know. After all, we are supposed to be in conference. By the way, do you have any drink here with which to entertain your more influential customers? It's over there. You fool for life! What have you done? Stop! Stop! It's only a fire engine. The station's in Market Street, just round the corner. Huh. Huh. Well, I could do with that drink. I'd better have one too. If I may say so, you look in need of it. I don't drink during office hours. Oh. I think this occasion might be an exception. Thank you. 
I'm afraid I can't wish you good luck. No, I agree, Fordyce. It would be out of character. You're hardly in a position to know anything about my character. I think I am. You're not a very charitable man, let alone a sporting one. The opinion of a common thief is of no interest to me. I flatter myself I'm a rather uncommon thief. A common one would just make off with the money. But I can't help interesting myself in people. It's a failing you ought to cultivate, Fordyce. Thank you. You ought to encourage Sanderson in his chest, for instance. You know, I'm interested in every single person who works for me. Their families, what happens to them. You ought to take them out for a drink occasionally, join their Christmas party. Or just listen to them. I believe it to be enough if my staff respect me for my efficiency. And your family, do they respect you too? Must you keep reminding me of what they're going through? Can't you stop gloating? I'm not gloating. I asked because I noticed that when the telephone rang this morning, your child was calling for his mother, not his father. And when your wife spoke to you, she used the word beseech, as if you were not often given to mercy. Shut up, will you? Don't raise your voice, Fordyce, if you really want to show them mercy. I will not stand here having judgment passed on me by a criminal. I'm only trying to show you the error of your ways, Fordyce. For you to moralize. Sitting there like some damned saint. <laughs> The saints love their fellow men, but when you're called to account, how many of your fellow creatures will give evidence for you? Those people out there, for instance, what will they say? I am not particularly interested in the opinions of... Now! No! Repeat your instructions. What happens when Pearson comes in? We go through the door to the staircase, and Pearson and I switch off the electric eye. Then we go down and... Open the safety doors for you. Then I tell... No, then, then you tell Pearson to go. But I say that there should be two members of the staff in the strong room at all times. In the end, you tell Pearson to lock us in. That is, by locking these two doors here. Then he goes. Then he goes. Yes, but I, I stop him to say that there are to be no large withdrawals until, until we finish. Right. And above all, speak naturally. If it goes differently or you forget anything, for heaven's sake, don't panic. I'll be there. Just behave as if it were, in fact, a normal security check. Now, are you absolutely certain that everything's been taken into account? Because if we should fail, you know what it means. The orders are already given. They will be ruthlessly carried out. Is it likely I should let you make a mistake? Up to now, you've made all the threats. I'll make only one. If anything happens to my family, I'll kill you. I swear I will. Old person. Springhall speaking. Ask Mr. Pearson to come in, please. Yes, sir. Come in. Yes, sir. Things still quiet out there? There's nothing doing at all, sir. You couldn't have chosen a better time if you'd planned it. Oh, right. Who's there? Ah, is your electric eye system in order? Yes, sir. Well, well we'd better switch it off then. Yes, sir. Right. Lead the way, Pearson. Ah, 
I sometimes feel I never want to see the inside of another bank as long as I live. Do you ever get like that, Fordyce? No, I can't say I do. I must be in need of a holiday. When did you last check your alarm system? It's always checked every Saturday morning before we open. Mm -hmm. What's that light for? It's a red blinker light. It flashes to warn us that the inner grill door hasn't been properly closed. Mm -hmm. If it isn't attended to after 30 seconds, the general alarm is set off. I see, yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, 30 seconds, you give them time to open up and reset the grill door, huh? We've uh, never had occasion to need the reminder. Oh, I'm sure of that. I suppose it's all in the day's work for us, the moment before a strong room door opens. Yet I suppose it's also the moment a thousand thieves have dreamt of as the highlight of their lives. Let's hope their dreams don't come true, sir. <sighs> hmm. The stuff you fellows collect in these places. Let's have a look at your current holdings for us. There you go. Hmm. You always carry as much as that? Except for the two months just after Christmas. Pearson, will you turn on the vent later? We may be down here sometime. Oh, Pearson, I don't think we need keep you any longer. Let's have your key to the safety doors, will you? My key, sir. <clears throat> uh, this is somewhat irregular. Uh, strictly speaking, Colonel, Pearson should only give that key up to his deputy. And besides, there should be two members of the staff down here all the time the strong room is open. Quite right. In fact, if you hadn't come out with it, it would have meant a black mark in my report. However, Pearson, the usual form on my inspections is for the chief clerk to lock all the doors to this part of the bank and then to let us have his key to the safety doors in case we have to leave the strong room unattended for any length of time. Well, what about it? Think you can trust me to keep an eye on Mr. Fordyce, Pearson? Yes, I think so, sir. Good. Just lock the outer door to my office, will you, Pearson? So that the Colonel and I can get in there from here if we have to refer to anything. Very good, sir. I shan't open them again until I hear from you. Correct. Oh, Pearson, should anyone come in for a large withdrawal, Tell the clerks to ask them to come back in an hour. Say we're having an audit or something. Oh, it's all right. desk for that. Don't hurry. Sit down. Why didn't you tell him, Fordyce? I didn't remember. He, he cleans the windows once a month. Even when it's snowing? We have a contract. Does he come inside later? No, that's done by the office staff. Settled in one place. The air on Dartmoor is very bracing, I believe. There's no doubt. Our right will be far beyond the reach of our extradition laws. What's the matter? 
Nothing, nothing. Par notes first. 20,000 in each of the big cases, 10,000 in the small. Send your postcard for that. You'll be able to come and stay with me in my villa. With your family, of course. Just fill up each case as far as you can go. Fibers are a damn nuisance. It would take years to farm our way this far. Around the race courses, this is a usual practice, isn't it? I'm afraid professional ethics prevents me from disclosing that information <laughs> here, let me.
extra guy. The door, lock it. I don't want it. You won't have to listen to me much longer. Mm. Thank heaven. That last little exhibition was to tell my friend that the first stage of the operation is completed. It is the last signal he will get from me. The next will come from you. I can't take any more of this. Look, I've, I've had enough. You've got what you came for. Now, why don't you go? That is exactly what I intend to do. But first, we must discuss the most important stage of this operation, my getaway. They'll catch you. They'll catch all of you. I hope not, Four Eyes, for your sake. What do you mean? I have a rendezvous with my friends in about an hour's time. If I fail to turn up, they're likely to become irritable, restless, and generally unpleasant. I am not interested or concerned. Oh, but you are, Fordyce. You've missed the point again. You are most concerned. But you don't... You haven't... You don't mean you're taking them with you? Not taking, Fordyce. Borrowing, to use a banker's term, as collateral. You, you, you cannot subject them to any more. My wife is very highly strung. For pity's sake, leave them. Look, I'll go with you willingly. I'll do anything you say. Sit down. Now listen carefully, Fordyce. No one need die if you do as I say. I want one hour, that's all. City and Colonial, can I help you? How would you like it, Mrs. Tate? In fivers? In ones, please. That is, if it's not too much trouble. No trouble at all. Your call's through. Oh, I'll be with you in a minute. I'll hang on for you. Uh, look, Arthur, I'll do it if you're busy. OK. Uh, it's Home and Mercantile on the line. Get through to their bank insurance department. OK. And look slippy or he'll be gone. Roger. Hello? Time to make it. It's about 22. Exactly, man. 19 minutes to 11. Right. Now, as soon as I drive away, you come back in here, go to that window, mop your brow with your handkerchief twice, very distinctly. After that, you have one hour, 60 minutes. What does that mean? We're leaving a man behind in Havisham. I will be in touch with him by telephone every 15 minutes. If he reports that a police alarm has been given or that we're being followed, your wife and child will be killed immediately and we will switch to another escape plan already prepared. But if all goes well, your wife and child will be released exactly one hour after I leave here. Is that absolutely clear? Yes, it's quite clear. Time for Pearson. Just a moment. Don't, for heaven's sake, deceive yourself into thinking that this couldn't happen. After I leave, you're on your own, and only you know what is at stake. If suspicions are aroused, you must prevent the alarm being given at all costs. I don't have to tell you any more, do I? No. I'm afraid I understand only too well. Right. Miss Pringle speaking. Is Mr. Pearson there? One moment, sir. Mr. Pearson. Just coming, sir. Yes, I'm still coming on. Pearson. Colonel Wall headphones ready to leave. Get his car round immediately, please. Oh, very good, sir. And he'd like to see you before he goes. See me? That's right, Pearson. Yes, sir. <coughs> They're finished in there. Well, what about her? She's been hanging oh. on for two minutes. Who is it? The, the home in the hooses. Oh, well, I'll take that. You, you go and get the Colonel's car. All right. 
No, and don't smash it up. Roger, Dodger. Hello? 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 Don't cut off. Come in. You wanted to see me, sir? Oh, just a moment, person. Now, Fordyce, I'll just get you to sign this clearance certificate, if you will. Well, Don't want my fellow directors to think I've been spending the time with a popsy in Brighton. Thank you. Well, Pearson, I just wanted to tell you that I intend giving an excellent report on this branch. Thank you, sir. Uh, about that ammunition. Ammunition? What ammunition? My memory gets a bit rusty at Christmas time. Well, there is just one thing, Pearson. The next time a Hope and Mercantile man calls, Telephone his office and check up on him. It's a rule. I realize that, sir. As a matter of fact... Well, no harm done. Uh, Fordyce had the good sense to check himself. Well, thank you very much, Fordyce. You've been most cooperative. Thank you. Oh, uh, Pearson, say goodbye to the staff for me, will you? Wish them a Merry Christmas. Uh, and you might say that, in my opinion, it would take a very clever fellow to rob this bank. <laughs> and I'm an expert. I'll give you a hand with the bag, sir. Uh, that's all right, Pearson. I'll help the Colonel out. Thank you very much. Oh, that's all right, thank you, Harvey. Have a good Christmas. Thank you, sir. The same to you. Well, I'll do my best. That's what I call a car. Better than that old tin can you run around in, Arthur. Well, I wasn't a colonel. I was a corporal. Better go in, Fordyce. Don't want you catching cold. Ah, uh, goodbye. Keep your chin up. City and Colonial. Mr. Fordyce. <gasps> what the... What's going on, Mr. Fordyce? What are you talking about? How dare you come into my room without knocking? I've just had Herman Mercantile on the phone. Who? You didn't ring them, did you? What do you mean? Of course I rang them. You, you, you heard what Colonel Gore Hepburn said? It wasn't him. The real Gore Hepburn's in Manchester. Are you out of your mind, Pearson? Why did you lie? What were you doing at the window just now? That's enough, Pearson. I've had enough of your impertinence. I'll ring the Herman Mercantile myself. Either some stupid typist has made an error, or you received some garbled message. Now, you, you get back to your work at once. Come off it, Fordyce. Do as I say. He's robbed the bank, hasn't he? How much did he get away with? 93,000. 93,000? And you helped him? I had to, Pearson. I still have to. I don't understand. They've got my wife, Pearson. And the boy. Oh, no. There mustn't be any alarm. The, the police mustn't know. Not for an hour. There's one of the gang out there keeping watch. But the police... Uh, I daren't tell them, Pearson. I, I can't. I can't take the risk. I've already rung them. What? Have you... You've called them? I rang them immediately. You must stop them. They're on their way. You've got to stop them. Tell them it was a mistake. A mistake? You rang them in error. You must think of something. But the others, Sanders and Harville... They, they know. They heard me ring. They... they mustn't say anything. They mustn't. Explain to them what's happened. They'll understand. Pearson, promise me you'll do that.
promise, please. You know what you're asking. They've got to help me. Pearson, they must. The money, Mr. Fordyce, the bank's money. Forget the money, Pearson. Pearson, listen. Now listen to me. My family are all I've got. I have no friends, nobody. Only my wife and my son. That's all I've got. You've got to understand, Pearson. They're all I've got. Sir, I'm Detective Sergeant Collins. Good morning, Sergeant. Uh, well, I'm afraid there's been a rather unfortunate mistake. A mistake? Detective Constable Cairn, he took the call. Uh, Mr. Pearson made the call. He gave a description of a man and a car. The inspector sent out a general alarm. Uh, you must cancel it uh, immediately. Well, I, I mean, it's very important. It's my fault, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm Pearson. The man I described is a senior official. An official? From head office. He's a very important man, and, well, if he stopped... I made a bit of a fool of myself. You see, I thought he was described in our banker's journal as a thief. And when I found a rather large sum of money missing... Money missing? Well, it wasn't exactly missing. I had it, Sergeant. I'd taken it to check without telling Mr. Pearson. And you panicked? I'm afraid so. You'd better cancel the alarm right away. I'll just take details. Well, th th there's really no time. It is rather urgent. You see, he's a fairly big shot. And, well, if he stopped, well, you understand. You're all being for a rocket. That's right. Okay. Use the car radio. Sorry. May I offer you a drink, Sergeant? Well, uh... Well, it's Christmas time. Thank you, sir. This way. Soda, Sergeant. As it comes, please, sir. <laughs> oh, very good health. You're not joining me, sir? Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. Do uh, anyone see you arrive? How do you mean, sir? Was there a crowd when your car drew up? No, not particularly. Usual shoppers. Why, sir? Oh, nothing, Sergeant. Nothing special. It was just that I, I wouldn't like people to get the wrong impression. You know how quickly rumours start in this town. Why shouldn't worry, sir? We didn't have any bells or sirens going. Oh, then you, you might just have been clients. As a matter of fact, I am a client, sir. I keep my ill-gotten gains in this bag. Yes, of course. Yes. I had forgotten that. You won't think I'm making too much of this, Sergeant. It's just that I do have the good name of the bank to think of. You take your job very much to heart, don't you, Mr. Forrest? It's a heavy responsibility, Sergeant. I understand, sir. Well, it was very nice. Have you time for another? No. Better begin to make the station. I do hope there won't be any trouble. Well, between you and me, sir, it's the inspector I'm worried about. Inspector Latimer? No, he's gone. Well, a new man, Mason from London, dead keen. Got this call, was off like a greyhound. Mistakes do happen. Oh, sure. But he's not going to like being sent on a wild goose chase. No. I suppose not. Well, don't worry, sir. I'll explain. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you very much indeed. Nothing wrong, sir, is there? How do you mean? I hope you don't mind me mentioning it, sir, but you look a bit under the weather. No, there's nothing wrong. 
Nothing at all. It's been a hard day so far. I understand, sir. I bet you'll be glad when it's over. Yes, I will, Sergeant. Well, Merry Christmas, sir. And to you. Well, nice. Nice to see you again. Meet a friend of mine, Bill Mason. Mason, this is Fordyce, the manager. Do you know this gentleman, Mr. Fordyce? Know him? Well, of course I know him. He's from the head office. That's funny. We heard he was from an insurance company. That's right. That's what I meant. Head office of the Homer Mercantile. They, they insure this bank. Excuse me, Inspector. We sent out a message about this business. Message, Sergeant? Yes, it's been a bloomer. One of the clerks here sent out a false alarm, apparently. Oh, there you are, Mason. I told you there'd been a mess up. Inspector, I'm afraid you've made a, a terrible error. This is Colonel Gore Hepburn. I, I know him well. You do? He's from the Home and Mercantile, one of their principal directors. I see. I admit the mistake was ours originally, but I really feel that you've made matters considerably worse. I think the best thing you can do is to release the Colonel forthwith and apologize. That's exactly what I suggested to Mason myself, Fordyce. You'd be prepared to vouch for him, would you, sir? Well, of course I would. You say you've known him for several years? Yes, Inspector, yes. Now, for goodness sake... Then what about this, Mr. Fordyce? You're prepared to vouch for this, too? They're all the same. Good Lord, there must be 50,000 quid in this lot. 93,000 to be exact, son. Uh, Mr. Fordyce and I were planning a little last minute Christmas shopping, as I explained to Mason. I'm waiting for your answer, Mr. Fordyce. You knew about this. <laughs> it might help if I tell you, but I also can vouch for Colonel Gore Hepburn. Except that last time we met, he was a rear admiral on a jewellery job. My immediate interest is in his accomplices. Accomplices? Well, he could hardly have got into your strong room and packed four heavy cases without help, could he? Well, sir? He made me do it. They got my wife and child. Oh, really, Ford? He threatened to kill them if I didn't do as he said. You've got the hurry, Inspector. We can still save them. There's no good, Ford. I said it won't work. Keep quiet. When did you last see your wife? When I left home this morning and then she rang about an hour ago. There's no time. He has to ring someone every 15 minutes. What's your number? She's not there. They took her away and my son. For all I know, they may Your already... Your number, be... please. It's... it's Haversham 2153. We're wasting time, Inspector. If your family's in danger, if... we'll save them. Of course they're in danger. They threatened to electrocute my wife. For pity's sake, Inspector, you don't think I robbed the bank voluntarily, do you? I was forced and, and threatened. Percy, you're talking about Fordyce. Now, listen, Hepburn. I've taken Calm about down, enough down, Mr. Fordyce. Yes, but... Calm down. We'll soon see. Who's that speaking? Tommy Fordyce. Tommy! Is your mother there, Tommy? This is Inspector Mason. Hold on. I'll call her. But I, I don't understand. They must have released her. Anybody mind if I smoke? Mrs. Fordyce speaking. Hello, Mrs. Fordyce. I wonder if you could tell me. Has anyone called on you this morning? Any strangers? Strangers? What do you mean? You've been alone all morning. Hello, Mary. Mary, this is Harry. Are you all right, dear? All right. Of course I'm all right. They, they let you go? Let, let me go? Who let me go? When you rang before, there were two men with you. Two men with me? But what are you talking about, Harry? But I didn't ring you. You know, I never ring you at the office. You told me not to. But it was your voice. 
Yours and Tommy's. You said, do what they want, I beseech you, and no. <laughs> this is Inspector Mason again, Mrs. Fordyce. I'd be most obliged if you'll come down to the station right away. But what is it? What's happened? Nothing serious, ma'am. Just routine. But... But it was her. She was desperate. I'm afraid I must ask you to accompany me to the station. You don't understand. They're going to pin a medal on your Fordyce for gallantry. Inspector, you don't really believe I'm lying, do you? I tell you, it was her voice. And Hepburn, he, he kept signaling to someone outside. There are just some questions I must ask you. Inspector, I'm telling the truth. I am not a criminal. I am the manager of this branch. I've been here 15 years. You've got to believe me. Look, he, he made me stand by this window and, and mop my brow with my handkerchief as a signal. I believe you. You are making a mistake. You can put it all in a statement, Mr. Fordyce. Get your hat and coat. <laughs> OK, in the car. Just a moment, Mason. There's something I ought to know. I know it's a two-handed job. No, three-handed, actually. Me, a man, and a tape recorder. Took us a bit of time to get the voices right, but we managed. Anyway, it worked, didn't it, Fordyce? out. The man? Don't be silly, Mason. I use better men than him. Who was the man? Father Christmas. Someone Fordyce ought to believe in. You fit, Mr. Fordyce? Excuse me. May I just have a word with my chief clerk, Inspector? Of course. Thank you. Pearson? I have to go out for a little while. I'm sure you'll be able to run things in my absence. Yes, I think so, sir. How long do you expect to be away? You had better ask the inspector that. What is the usual sentence? For what? For completely failing in my duty towards my staff. That's not against the law, sir. Oh, and there's one other point, Pearson. I owe Colonel Gore Hepburn a pound. Uh, could you possibly lend me one? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. I'll, I'll return it tonight at the staff party. Thank you, Pearson. All right, Inspector. Oh, sh shall I give you a hand with the uh, evidence? Thank you, sir. <laughs> 